You ever wonder how you get a dog that's gone from zero to 60 in a high drive state to stop and listen to you or even indicate on your target odor? This is such a critical skill when it comes to scent work. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you how I train my German Shepherd dog, Disney, to sit and listen, even in a high drive state. Let's get after it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dingle Days. I'm Jariah Dingle, the canine scent boss, and I'm fired up to share with you a few tips to train your dog to listen and obey even in a high drive state. But just so we're all on the same page, let's start with defining a term. So what is drive anyway? Drives are generally influenced and can be bred for or bred against. Just the amount or type of behavior exhibited by a dog. It can be influenced and have varying levels of intensity. We want our dog and scent work to have a very high hunt drive, but at the same time, we want our dog to be attentive and focused on us at the start line so as to not be so excited that we're not able to focus on the search itself. And there's a very delicate balance there. Drive in and of itself is really not a negative or a positive thing. We just want to harness it and shape it in such a way that we get the desired results and we set expectations appropriately. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get right to the training tips. So real quick, this channel is all about my journey with my German Shepherd dog, Disney, as we walk through the basics of canine scent work, pet photography, and the best pet technology to complement your productive lifestyle. So if that sounds like something that interests you, please consider subscribing. All right, back to the content. Drive is so critical for your dog to have, especially as the level of high difficulty increases in the upper levels of competition, when your dog really has to be persistent in the hunt. However, that very same drive can result in unwanted behaviors, and if not controlled and shaped into something that can result into positive results for your dog. So a great way to practice turning the drive on and off is the sit, play, sit game. How do you train it? Get something your dog really enjoys, like their favorite tub, or toy and get them really excited about it, but maintain compliance with your obedience cues. For instance, just by grabbing the tug in view of my dog, it'll result in him getting excited about what is very likely about to occur next. However, if this excitement results in unwanted jumping or barking or behaviors we don't like, we need to conduct some type of counter conditioning to set proper expectations. This can really really ugly head. For example, if you want your dog to sit and wait at the start line for a scent work competition and not have them so riled up. It's much better to practice these types of behaviors behaviors away from the target odor because we want to keep the hunt a very positive experience. We will, over time, generalize these behaviors in other environments once our dog has a very clear understanding of what they have to do. They have to listen no matter how excited they are. I'll demonstrate this with Disney. Sit. Good. Look. Get it. Get it. If your dog lunges but knows the wait command, then cue him to wait, which means something is about to happen. Here. Very good. Wait. Then cue him to play or get it, get it. Get it, get it. Ah, yeah. Good. Ah. And play with your dog and have a great time and then cue them to sit. Drop it. Sit. Wait. Do not resume the game until they comply. This is teaching them that even in a high state of drive, you still have to listen. You can practice other impulse control games with your dog with other routine activities around the house, such as sitting to get out of the crate or sitting to go outside. Likely without knowing it, we all have some schema that predicts what is about to happen for common routines around the house. Grabbing the leash, for instance, might tell my dog, it's time to go outside. Grabbing the tug might tell him it's time to play. We don't want to have to alter our entire routine simply because our dogs can't control themselves. So I think it's best to train my dog what I'd like him to do in many different situations and environments. Drop it. Sit. For a complete rundown of how to train stickiness without killing the hunt drive, click or tap the screen right here or check out some of our other canine scent work practice videos linked in the description below. Until next time, continue to get after it.